I'm John Lentz with City and State, and joining us today is Assemblyman Richard Gottfried, and we're here to talk about medical marijuana. That was a law that you championed last year, was successful, mm -hmm. and now we're getting close to the point, or so we hear, that they'll be picking the winning bids. Uh, I understand there are 43 applicants, um, and it could be mid-July, perhaps a little later, that we'll know who the winning bids are. Um, and I was wondering, have you paid attention to the process? And, and then specifically, uh, what, what are the criteria here? How do you tell a good bidder from a, a less good bidder? Well, I mean, I've been watching the process, although once bids were submitted, uh, in a way, there was really nothing to watch because uh, quite appropriately under state law, once bids come in, uh, the people in the executive branch who judge those bids are pretty much forbidden to talk to anybody, uh, which is probably a good thing. Uh, what the criteria are, we really don't know. Uh, the statute and the regulations have a zillion things, uh, and, and almost an outrageous number of things, you know, details you have to comply with. But if, you know, if 20 of the 43 uh, applicants all comply with the, with the requirements, there is nothing in the statute or the regulations that tells the health department uh, which of those 20 uh, qualified bidders should get a contract, uh, which to me is, is a pretty problematic situation. I mean, if the state is going to be handing out what, what may be a very valuable license and there's no regulatory basis or criteria for picking applicant number six as opposed to applicant number 12, to me that's an invitation to trouble. Uh, but that's how the regulations are written. Mm -hmm. And now New York obviously is not the first state to have gone through this process. Uh, when you were writing this legislation and researching it, were there any states that, that did a really good job or, or states that didn't do so well? And, and what lessons did you learn from how it worked I, elsewhere? I think we focused a lot on Colorado, partly because it was a, you know, a very detailed regulate, regulatory uh, setup, uh, and people talked about it a lot. Uh, on the negative side, we went out of our way to be able to tell people, you know, this is nothing like California, because lots of people thought California was a, was a bad model. Um, but actually, probably about 90, 95% of the words in the bill uh, were written well before anybody actually looked at Colorado. Uh, but I think what we set up, uh, like Colorado and several other states, sets up a, a very tightly regulated uh, process, actually a whole lot more regulated than the process governing uh, extremely dangerous drugs like, like morphine and hydrocodone. Uh, nobody needs a photo ID card to fill a prescription for morphine. Uh, and some of the state regulations uh, governing the hand, handling of medical marijuana are, are bizarre compared with you know, handling of anything else. And uh, with those uh, regulations, I, you know, there was a lot of discussion about are these too restrictive, are we limiting mm -hmm. it too much? Could that lead to um, you know, fewer bidders getting in the process or potentially big business coming in and, and people that have the money, the, yeah. the, the ability to take a longer uh, view, a longer term strategy, and, and then of eliminating the option for, for you know, maybe yeah. people just starting up and trying to get in the process. It's harder for them to get in. Is that uh, a risk in, in your view? Well, you certainly, well, first of all, the way the regulations are written and some of the requirements, if you don't have a lot of money, uh, you're not going to be a player. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate. On the other hand, you certainly do want the applicants to be people who, who are serious and not just, you know, a couple of guys who want to brew up product in, in, in the bathtub or in the garage. Uh, you want people that are not a fly-by-night operation. Uh, 
On the other hand, you know, it's like if, if to pass a civil service test uh, to be a policeman, you had to write an essay in classical Latin, uh, you know, that would help make sure you got very smart people, I suppose, uh, to be policemen, but it doesn't have a whole lot to do with your ability uh, to enforce the law. And I, I think a lot of these requirements really make no sense. And if we, if we impose those requirements on people who are going to sell uh, morphine, uh, you know, the, the every neighborhood pharmacy would be up in arms, quite justifiably. Now, your colleague, uh, State Senator Diane Savino, who also sponsored the legislation setting up the medical marijuana program, she was in talking with us recently, and uh, one thing she talked about is adding more diseases. There's, I think, mm -hmm. a, a limited list yep. of diseases that you can use this treatment for. Uh, she said one example, PTSD, there might be a few others. Yep. The, a decision has to be made um, by, I think, early next year. but. I guess, what is your view? What, what should be done here? Um, which diseases should be covered? Or should it even be limited mm -hmm. to specific individual diseases? Yeah. You know, state law does not set any criteria for what you can prescribe almost any drug for. Uh, and yet there is this very restrictive provision for medical marijuana. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. You know, Back when we were negotiating language in this bill with the Spitzer administration, and by the way, we came, I think, very close to getting something passed before he resigned, uh, the health department didn't want to have anything in the bill about the health department approving or not approving any condition because the health commissioner at the time said, it's not my job, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I don't want people lobbying me that, add this disease or don't add that disease, and, and he was right. Uh, I mean, that's a decision that doctors should make, not, not legislators or, or government officials. Uh, but Governor Cuomo was very insistent that we had to have a list of specific conditions, and that would be that, and they agreed to, well, the bill allows the health department to add more, and it requires them to study and report back on a handful of conditions. Uh, I certainly hope they approve them, uh, but I think rationally it should not be up to the law to say PTSD is in, but, uh, but this one is not. Uh, we don't do that for, for almost any other medication, including some very dangerous and highly addictive controlled substances. Mm -hmm. And this session, there is also uh, legislation passed in both houses, it's before the governor now, mm -hmm. to expedite access on a limited basis, right. I think, for, for these young children with epilepsy, uh, at least as one example. Well, it, it, certainly the, 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 the young children with uncontrollable epilepsy, many of whom have been able to get really amazing relief from their seizures uh, from using a version of medical marijuana that has you know, almost zero THC in it, which is the, the, the part of marijuana that gets you high, um, there, are, there are a fairly small number of, of those children in New York that have been able to have access to, uh, to that product for, uh, for over a year now uh, through a limited clinical trial at NYU. Uh, there is really no reason why the state has not moved forward to make programs like that available to a whole lot more of those children. They don't need any legislation to do that using the clinical trial mechanism, uh, and I really think they ought to be getting that done. Uh, they, they've been saying for months, oh, you know, any day now we'll be ready to do that, but it still hasn't happened. Uh, but there, the, the the bill that we passed this year would allow expedited, narrower implementation of the law specifically for patients who have a, uh, a serious degenerative condition or one where delay uh, would be life-threatening. Uh, I hope the governor will sign that bill. Uh, it, it builds on the structure of the, of the law we passed last year. Uh, I think it's a sensible approach. And again, Senator Savino, she has raised concerns about that bill. Um, 
citing possible legal risks that if you, you go forward on this limited basis, uh, it could lead to legal challenges, potentially mm -hmm. undermining yeah. the whole program. I know the Cuomo administration um, has made similar comments in the past. Yeah. Uh, what is your reaction I don't, to that? I don't think that argument makes sense. Uh, nobody has a legal vested right to be a, a medical marijuana producer or dispenser. Uh, and so the fact that the state, pursuant to a statute that the legislature passes, would be able to give out uh, an early permit to somebody on a very narrow basis, how that gives anybody a legal right to go to court uh, is beyond me. Uh, again, there's, there's no legally protected right that's being violated, and the action that would be being challenged would be one that was pursuant to a newly enacted statute. And it's for reasons of protecting serious threats to life and health. I would say anybody who, if anyone brings litigation uh, objecting to that legislation, I would have the children and their parents who are involved join that lawsuit as interveners and come to court every time there's a court appearance. And I would think that would take care of any legal challenge. And um, this medical mar marijuana program was supported by Democrats and Republicans. Yep. Uh, but if the state were to try to push forward and do recreational marijuana, you know, there might be some criticism that this program is just a stepping stone towards fully legalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's something Republicans might be concerned about. How, how would you respond to that line of reasoning? Well, you know, the fact that a doctor can write a prescription for morphine nobody thinks that that means that it's okay to use morphine for recreational purposes, and it isn't okay. Uh, the fact that we might argue that medical mar that marijuana uh, is no more dangerous than alcohol, and if we let people in a regulated environment buy alcohol, uh, why not allow the same for marijuana? That's a completely separate issue from the medical question. Uh, I think both probably make sense, uh, but one doesn't lead to the other. And the fact that somebody might think that marijuana is okay for recreational purposes says nothing about whether it should or shouldn't be okay for medical purposes. Assemblyman Gottfried, thank you. You're welcome.